Good morning, everybody. Uh, we will get started here shortly on today's webinar around the Genesis admin training on automatic log gathering. So we'll let a few people trickle in here before we get started. Uh, we will uh, let them get situated and then we'll get started here in about a minute or two. So thank you very much. And just as a note for everybody in the participant section, if you have any questions or comments throughout the uh, presentation, please feel free to either put them in the chat below, or there is also a Q&A section where you are more than welcome to put in your questions, and we will go ahead and answer them as they come up. Um, alongside that, uh, coming up soon here in the next few weeks, we've got a couple of the webinars. Uh, next week's will be around CCAS API integrations and use cases for that. And then, of course, towards the end of the month, we'll have a Mitel Connect end of life hardware for 2023, something to look forward to. Uh, if you have an on premise phone system today, what you can expect with your hardware going end of life. So it is 10.02. We will go ahead and get started on today's webinar. Again, uh, today's webinar is around Genesis admin training on automatic log gathering. We'll go through a couple things here at the start. We'll talk a little bit about who Inflow is. Um, we'll go in depth um, on the automatic log gathering portion of today's presentation. And then of course, at the end, we will cover a question and answer section as well, just to make sure we have all questions or curiosities answered. Um, so we'll start at the top. Who is Inflow CX? Great question. Well, Inflow is one of the innovative providers for strategic advisory, along with managed services and deliveries for a multitude of options when it comes to contact center, um, unified communications, or of course your customer experience with a CX ecosystem. We do a lot. Our expertise spans from multiple sides of the CX ecosystem to the UCAS and CCAS realms, workforce management, automation, analytics, and many other key engagement technologies. Uh, we have a great vendor neutral approach to our CX technology evaluation. So when we take a look at your systems today, uh, we will look for the best fit solution for your future system. Uh, not biased in any way towards any sort of vendors. We make sure that at the end of the day, your system is what benefits you first. Um, we'll help guide, execute, and optimize your current systems, your engagement strategies, anything you may have. We're here from start to finish, A to Z, we cover it all. A little bit more about us um, on that first slide there. We've got about a thousand market customers and then 500 CCAS installs as well. So we've got quite a knowledge when it comes to the CCAS realm, including Genesis, along with 300 contacts in our consulting engagements as well. Um, so really deep knowledge uh, and deep bench as well when it comes to what we can provide you for the CX ecosystem along with contact center. And some of our industry accolades really show that. We've got five, nine sales partner of the year along with a certified implementation partner. And probably one of our most proudest recommendations or accommodations one might call it is our Genesis implementation partner of the year. A very hard accolade to achieve, but we were grateful enough to be able to, uh, to achieve it. And of course, best of all, G2, uh, which is businesses allowing businesses to review each other. We have a 4.6 out of 5, which is uh, the highest that we can uh, possibly achieve on there out of our competitors. So something we like to hang our hats on and, and really showcase. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about our customers, just kind of a, a quick glance at who we help. This isn't really too flex or showcase who we help, but rather to showcase the fact that we work within a multitude of verticals. And there is no one vertical that we specialize in solely, but that the abilities we have span across a multitude of them. So you'll see tech and retail along with real estate services and healthcare. We also work uh, in the finance and industry section. So while there's a lot of big name brands here, we also have a lot of customers that uh, we've helped alongside and have had transitions, uh, optimizations, you name it, we've done it all for a multitude of people. Um, when it comes to our partners with technology, we actually work with quite a few. Um, like I mentioned on a couple slides back with certified implementation partners and sales partners as well. With CCAS and UCAS, we work closely with Genesis 5.9 and Nice CX. On the UCAS side, Ring Central and Zoom are, are two of our major partners as well. 
But of course, any of the labels that you see here on today's screen, we work closely with, especially within the CX ecosystem. We do a lot with workforce management and workforce engagement, quality analytics and AI agent assist. Many of these companies that you see listed, along with many more on the right-hand side for compliance, CRMs and BPOs, um, we work uh, very, very closely with and are able to pretty much put in place anything you can think of, we can create for you. Now for today's uh, presentation, we're gonna go over a little bit more on automatic log gathering for Genesis. And to do so, I'm gonna pass it over to Richard Dixon. Good afternoon, everybody. So uh, to enable automatic log capturing, this is something that just recently came out from Genesis. Uh, it allows you to automatically gather the logs instead of having to go in and manually gather them. Uh, if anybody has worked with us in the past, a lot of times when there's an issue that is directly related to an end user, we're gonna need logs. And that log is important to be able to pass along to Genesis or for us to be able to, to analyze it and look over to be able to find out, you know, kind of what's going on with the system and what we can do differently to maybe make adjustments. So the prerequisites, uh, there are prerequisites and they are not automatically enabled. So you will have to go through, even if you are already a, a long time admin in the system, you'll have to go into troubleshooting. You have to go into log capture and then you'll need to do add, delete, edit and view. You can also just click all, that will be another option there. So troubleshooting issues with incomplete information can be very difficult. Uh, console logs provide customers with a full picture of the issue. And when a problem occurs, these logs provide visibility in the action of the events of the agents in Genesis Cloud. Apart from manual log gathering, which is what everybody's really been doing for the past couple of years, uh, you can now enable the log, the automatic log capturing, and it'll go for about 24 hours. So uh, if you have an intermittent issue, it can be very difficult to be able to tell the, the individual to turn on the logging as they're experiencing this issue and then be able to actually get a good capture of it. So being able to have an automatic log capture is uh, it's much more beneficial where it, it's involved with the intermittent issue. Log captures, uh, as a note, they only gather Genesis Cloud uh, what it generates. It does not gather logs for any other open browser or tab. So it's only for what it's seeing in Genesis. So logs may contain sensitive information. They're also encrypted to transmit on an encrypted storage. Capture logs are automatically deleted after 10 days. You can enable the log capture for only five users at a time. So there are some limits to this. The user who downloads the logs can share with just their, uh, customer care or any third party like us, uh, where we'd be able to you know, review that information and you'd be able to remove any um, sensitive information if you needed to be able to remove that. Uh, log capture only works within Genesis Cloud desktop and web clients. Uh, for integrations such as Genesis uh, Cloud Embedded Framework, Genesis Cloud Chrome, Genesis Cloud Firefox, Genesis Cloud for Microsoft Teams, and Genesis Cloud for Salesforce, and Genesis Cloud for Zendesk, you can either use the server-side logs or gather them logs manually. Hey, Richard, we have a quick question from Scott. He asks, what if we do not have log capture in your troubleshooting section in your admin account? Can that be added? So this is exactly what we're gonna, we're covering right now. So you Perfect. actually have to go into permissions to be able to have that option available to you. So if you go into a, a role that works for you uh, and that could be applied to just admin, that way all admins have access to this, you'll need to go, and this is not native currently because it was recently implemented. So it's not um, something if you have admin already uh, you know configured, it's not gonna be there. So you'll have to add this. So this is where you're gonna go. And if you click right where the, the yellow arrow is there, it says troubleshooting log log capture permissions all, that'll give you all the permissions that you need. And then after you add that and save it, you'll be able to see the next portion of it. So to enable it, once you have actually you know, put that role in there, you'll have to click on admin and then under troubleshooting, you'll go to log capture. In that, you'll have a search for a user box, the type of the characters to begin with. Uh, the characters are not case sensitive. So as you type, as long as the name is in there, it'll pop up. On the hover text displays, it displays the username, click enable. This console log is uh, gonna appear for the next 10 days before it's deleted, and it's gonna be active for about 24 hours. So you'll see a green check mark in the log is active column. However, that does not indicate that their logs are actually being gathered. So here's the next important step that is really critical in order to be able to gather the logs. After it's been enabled for a user, the user must either refresh their browser or desktop client or log in and log back out. I'd recommend doing a log in, log out anytime you needed to gather logs after you make it active. So right here, this is the way the view will look once you get into it, you'll see troubleshooting and log capture. So that, that's the way it'll look currently. Most people who have admin will just see audit viewer and that's it. 
until you enable those permissions that we went over a couple slides back, you will not see log capture. So capturing the logs on a people page, you can also do this from the people side of things. So you can search for just the individual user. So in our people's permissions, you click people, navigate to the user you wanna modify. You'll see three dots and you'll be able to click more. Uh, from that menu it appears, you'll be able to click set log capture and it'll appear in the log capture page. To view the log capture page, click on admin, troubleshooting, and log capture. So after you get the logs, you'll be able to inspect it. So click inspect logs for the user to open the log page for troubleshooting. You can filter by logs by time, text, or type. Click the date range of the hyperlink to open a calendar view for the required date and time, and then click the right arrow for be able to filter by it. In the filter entries box, uh, type one or more of the characters to begin the search, and the characters are not case sensitive as well. If you log the entries, that'll contain the type that are displayed. To exclude views of types, you can clear from debug, info, log, warning, or error as selected. And in most cases, what we're going to want to have done is download the logs and be able to send them over to us. Or, uh, you know, if you aren't working with us, then probably over to Genesis Care at that time, you want to be able to forward those across. So you'll go into the log console page, click the download, and then provide that log to the third party. Any questions about the portion there? I know it was pretty quick. It's a pretty simple process. Um, being able to put it in automatic logging, but if there's any additional questions, we'll be able to answer it. Looks like we have one from Cindy, but I can happily answer this one for you. Uh, Cindy, yes, we will get this recording and uh, a copy of the slide deck after this. Um, I think, Richard, the next part is you demonstrating. Is that correct? Correct. This will be a demonstration for the next part. So this one will go a little bit slower. Uh, but the, the other one is essentially you, you give yourself the roles and permissions to be able to click on logging. You choose the individual who you want to log, and then you allow it to do it automatically. You just need to remember to have the individual log in and log back out after you click enable logging. Gotcha. And then Scott just mentions real quick, and this may be what you just answered, but he says, is this just the same process when you capture the network and console logs, but automatically? Correct. This is okay. their new design to make it a little bit easier. This also allows somebody to uh, work really with the intermittent call portion of it. I know there's a lot of um, incidents where it's very hard to be able to gather the log or uh, to get the user to be able to gather the log because you're reliant on them to be able to remember to enable logging during that time and then provide the hard file that they typically need when they're when they're trying to get that. This allows the automatic logging of that to eliminate the user really in that experience. Uh, so you're not reliant on the, the end user uh, to be able to, to get access the information that you really need. Fantastic. I appreciate it. Well, I'll turn it back over to you and, and let you walk through uh, the demonstration itself. All right, I'm going to be switching screens here. Hopefully this shows up correctly. Is everybody seeing the Genesis Cloud admin page right now? It does show, yes. All right, fantastic. So we're going to go into flow. So what we're going to need to do is go into architect. So if we type in architect or ARC, this will allow us to click on architect. This will open a new window. And we're going to start from the beginning and create a new inbound flow. So for the name, name it whatever you want. This time I'm going to name it Dixon. You could add a description. That way people would be able to see more information as it goes along. And then you can also choose the division where you want to go. I'm going to go with home in this case and create the flow. So right now it comes up with main menu. This is typically what we see. However, we're going to create a usable task. So this is going to create something very similar to the main menu where you would press a number to get to where you want to go. So we're going to add a reusable task. So you click on tasks. This will open up a new window here. The first thing that we're going to need to do is get a collect input. So for the collect input, we're going to name it whatever we want to name it. There's a lot of freedom involved with this, which can be kind of scary at first because, well, there's a lot of options here and there's not a lot of information. So for this, we're just going to do flow choice. We're just naming it flow.choice. That way we have something available to us to be able to make a change here. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to choose the range of digits. So this is going to allow them to input uh, like one, two, three, four, or five, however far we want to go with how many choices we want to have available to our, our menu. And we want to change it to 
exact. So that's important. Range of digits, it's very hard to see, but it says to exact. And then we'll want to change the slider down to exactly one. So the other information portion of this that we need to add here is the prompt. So this is going to be a speech to text option. So we can do something like, so press one for sales, add a space after that. Uh, press two for engineering, we'll do, we'll do four in this case. So do three for projects, and then we'll have a hidden one that they don't know about. So we're not going to add the fourth one in here. So this is something that you would pass along to like, let's say a VIP in this case. Once you hear our menu, you know to press four, and that'll get you directly into a, a flow of where we want. So now we have a success and failure. So this is going to look, did they input a number or did they not? And then we can make choices from here. So after that, we're going to add a switch. So I'm going to go to logic find switch, drag and drop it up here. And then we're gonna have multiple cases. Right now we have three cases, we need to add another case. So now we have four in this case. We're also going to change it to expression. We're going to add transfer to ACDs here because we want them to go to different flows in this case. And for the default flow, because in case something happens, we always want it to go to a, an original ACT. We're going to have it go here. If all else fails, then we're going to have a disconnect at the very bottom. That way it doesn't get hung in here. You can have the option of adding by dragging. You can also click and then choose along here to have the option. So for the input for the queue, you would, this is where you choose and specify a queue. Use your drop down here to be able to search for it. I guess the didn't save last night. Well, for now, we'll choose Jason's and add some in here. So in this case right now, depending on what they choose up in the top flow here, where they're getting the option to be able to make the choice, press one, two, three, or four, it's looking for that data input. And depending on which case they choose, this is where it'll wind up. So it's going to be case one is going to be flowed at choice. So they're looking for that. And I mean, to get the correct syntax, is I'm putting the incorrect one in there, just be a moment.
forgot the quotes around it. So you'll have to go into literal, put the quotes around it, and this allows you to uh, identify as soon as they press one, it'll transfer to case one. And we'll continue basically the same flow each time down, the ex same expression, you just need to change it from one to two, and so on. All right, any questions about that? So this is gonna work the same way as making a menu in there where you could do a reusable menu and, and tell it to choose one, two, three, or four. This is just a different way to go about it. We find it to be a little bit more efficient and we typically do this for, for most individuals here to have a switch as opposed to just the direct menu option here where you'd be able to jump to a menu or, or choose uh, menu one, two, three, four, et cetera. Does anybody have any questions about the flow? This is going to be kind of an ongoing series that we're going to do here. We're going to expand across this flow with each iteration as we move along to add some more features to it, um, to, to have people you know, understand different functionalities that can be added to uh, the NQ flow or a uh, inbound flow. Doesn't look like we have any questions coming in. Um... But I greatly appreciate it, Richard. This has been incredibly informative. Um, I feel like by the end of this series, I will be a Genesis architect, and that is something I can hang my hat on. So thank you for this. Um, really, really appreciate it. I know everyone else does as well. Um, there was definitely some questions earlier on, and happy that we could get those answered for everybody. So um, it looks like we don't have any further questions at this time. Which, uh, which works out great. So we can go ahead and talk about um, how to get in touch with us, ultimately. If you do have any questions moving forward, um, we have a few ways in which we can get in touch. Um, of course, you've got our main number, which is uh, listed here on the screen. But of course, contact at infocx.com, another great resource. You can ask any questions. It'll be routed to either an account executive to help you further investigate more, or your CSM over here on the, on the CSM team and we can answer further questions for you. Alongside that, you'll be able to find this podcast, excuse me, this webinar, along with any of our other previous webinars and also our podcast um, located on YouTube um, and LinkedIn as well. You'll find there with some helpful links to Apple Podcasts, our Facebook and Twitter as well, if you are curious uh, on what we're tweeting on a daily basis. So thank you again for everybody for coming to today's webinar, and we greatly appreciate your attendance. Like I mentioned before, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and get in touch with us. We're more than happy to help. Otherwise, thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Have a good day.